Hi, my name is Vesna Karapetrova and we're here today at the Canadian Macedonian Historical Society on October 20th, 2015 to interview Mrs. Donna Elia. Welcome Ms. Donna Elia and thank you so much for giving us um, your time for this interview for our archives of the Canadian Macedonian Historical Society. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, let's begin by um, telling us where and when you were born. I was born in Toronto on November 2nd, 1930. And who were your parents and where were they born? My parents were Feta and Dono, but his name was Anthony later on. Last name was Lazaro, L-A-Z-A-R-O-W, and they were both born in... Mm -hmm the villages in the old country in Macedonia called Chernovishta. Uh, this is your mother who was from Chernovishta? And my father. They were both from the same village? Yes. And there we have some lovely pictures of them here. We have a picture, a uh, single picture of your father, I understand? Yes, that's the picture he sent my mother because she was a male bride. Actually, they were supposed to get married in the old country. And he bought her a gold coin, which I now have, American from the 1800s and he never got back to get married because there was another war. And what happened? Tell us that interesting story. I don't know exactly what happened but he wrote a letter to his parents mm -hmm. to find him a bride and I guess... And this is when your, your uh, father was in, uh, the in the army? In Canada. He, no. Oh, he was in Canada. No, he was mm -hmm. not in the army. Mm -hmm but he was going to be conscripted like they pulled all the young men mm -hmm. and his father sent him here to Canada and he tried to get passage on the Titanic mm -hmm. but it was filled up and he couldn't get passage so he came on the next boat from England so this to was, Halifax. This is your? My father. Your father. Yes. It was very lucky he didn't uh, go on the Titanic. That's I wouldn't quite, be here. I yes, guess. quite an amazing story. So, uh, why was he overseas? He was in Macedonia, mm -hmm. and there was a war, and they were taking all the boys mm -hmm. in the war, and in those days they actually shot guns at each other in the villages. Mm -hmm. So this would be in the nineteen twenties. Just before. Just before 1920. Yeah, no, because he came in 1912. Your father? Yes. Mm -hmm. In April of 1912. That's when the Titanic went down. Right. Mm -hmm. And he came through England. I don't know why his father sent him through England. Maybe there wasn't a ship coming. And he landed in Halifax, not New York. My mother came to New York. And then from Halifax, he came to? Came to Toronto. That's where his father was? No. His, his father, father was, was in the, the old country. He never came. His father never came? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once your father was here as a young man, then he? He worked in an abattoir, which is uh, animal, cleaning animals and killing them, I guess, because that's all he could get. Mm -hmm. And then he decided to, so it was time he got married, so he sent his parents in Chernobyshta a letter to find him a bride. And he sent them that nice picture we showed of himself. Yes, and she also sent a picture. Mm -hmm. I and, don't, and then they got married. How did they get married? They got married here on January the 1st. She arrived, I believe, in November or December of the year before. And then January the 1st, my father always wanted to get married on the first day of the year. So that's when they got married. And, uh, and their names? Tveta mm -hmm. was my mother's name. My father's name was Andon, but mm -hmm. they called him Dono. And uh, the last name? Lazaro, mm -hmm. L-A-Z-A-R-O-W. Do you know your mother's uh, maiden name? Yes, my mother's na maiden name was Shikaris, but they changed it because you know, they, they went by the father's first name. My father's name originally was Andon Nikolov because his father's name was Nikola. But then he changed it because he was the grandson of Lazar. Lazar. 
then he changed it to Lazaro. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have some nice pictures here. That was a wedding. My father's friend was getting married mm -hmm. that he went hunting with. And for some reason, we were all dressed up. And uh, when your parents were living in, um, in Chernovishta, uh, what, uh, in the village, what language did they speak? They spoke Macedonian. Mm -hmm. Because I believe my father, when he left, the Turks were in Macedonia. Okay. And there was no Greek at that time. Right. And then when your parents came, uh, when your mother came here, what year were they married in? 1921, mm -hmm. January 1st. Now, uh, we also have a nice picture uh, of you as a baby, and tell us about the, pic the, other, uh, the other kids. The other two are my brothers, Boris, mm -hmm. who was five years younger than me, and Vlado, but we called him Danny, because mm -hmm. he didn't like Vlado. He was seven years older than me, and I'm the baby there, and I'm one year old. And when uh, when were, uh, so you're, you're one year old there, and um, uh, when you, when your parents came here, your mother joined your father. That's right. And then, and do you know anything about how, how their marriage progressed? Well, their marriage progressed because they were married over 50 years and their wedding picture's in there. Mm -hmm. I and don't think you showed it. The, the wedding picture we did. Oh, you did? Yes. I'm sorry. No problem. And uh, your, tell us about your grandparents, what their names were. I didn't see my grandparents. Because they stayed in the they village? They stayed in the old country. Mm -hmm. My father's mother died young and my my grandfather's name was Nicola. Mm -hmm. His mother's name, my mother's mother's name was Sena, mm -hmm. and her father was, uh, he came over when he was about 95 years old, so that it wasn't the same relationship as my husband had with his grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And his name was Andrew, well we call him Andrew, I don't know what his real name was. Mm -hmm. Right, and um, we've, we have a nice picture here. Can you tell us about that picture? That's my mother-in-law, mm -hmm. and that is her daughter, firstborn, Basilka. And the little man is my husband. Mm -hmm. The reason they came, my father-in-law was already here. Yes, tell us but about your husband, yeah? I'm telling you about my father-in-law first. Father-in-law first, yes. They didn't have permission to come because he was trying to earn enough money to keep them. But Vasilka, the oldest firstborn, she wrote and told my father-in-law that they had no food to eat and that they were going to die. Mm -hmm. So he realized he should bring them over. Mm -hmm. Already his brother, my husband's brother Peter, was already here. Peter was born after Vasilka. There was one girl, her name was Masa, and she died in about 12 years old. The Silka in that picture is 15. My husband is two. So in between there was one, and Peter was born. And in Canada, two more boys were born, George and Louis. Okay, now so they had a big family. That's a big family. Tell us about your husband's name and when he was born. He was born on the 27th of September, 1920. And his name? James. They called him Mitre for some reason, mm -hmm. but he got the name James Elia. So he was born in Canada. No. No, he where what? He was two years old when yes, he came and in that little picture. That's with his right. sister and mother. And this is from the same village? Yes. From Chernobyl? No, from no? Gabrish. For, from Gabrish. This is your husband's That's right. Your husband's uh, family. Father. Yes, your, your and husband's mother. father and mother. And uh, who was your who were your husband's parents? My husband's parents were Petra mm -hmm. and Stavro Ilaya. And my father-in-law, as I mentioned, was the first president at St. George's Church. Mm -hmm. But that was a few years later when they built the church. Yes. Uh, do you know when that was, when he was president? It'll be 75 years next year. 
They're mm -hmm. going to have a celebration. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, this uh, this picture, Donna, can you tell us about this This is picture? my father-in-law and my mother-in-law with their children, except the older girl on the right side is the Silka, and she was married to George over there. And I guess they took that picture when she was married. Mm -hmm. This is my husband on the left here. Oh. I'm not supposed to it's touch okay. it. It's okay. He's the, he's the bigger boy? Yes. Okay. He's mm -hmm. the bigger boy. And the boy on the far side mm -hmm. behind my, my father-in-law is Peter. Okay. Peter came to Canada first. And then Basilka came with my husband and her mother. Mm -hmm. And her last name, married name, is Roboff. Our, she's passed away too. Mm -hmm. She was a real terrific person. She could cook and everything else. Mm -hmm. So how was, uh, how was it uh, growing up for your husband in Canada? He was only two when he came. That's right. What, uh, what, what do you recall about uh, his life as, as a child and how he grew up? I don't know exactly what happened, but my father-in-law had a store. Mm -hmm. at 1160 Queen Street East and they lived on the second floor and my father-in-law had a butcher store there there my husband as you can see there delivered flyers for him and groceries just when he was a young boy mm -hmm. and uh, in this picture can you tell us uh, who they are? The lady there is my mother on the far, far side, mm -hmm. and beside her are both my brothers, Boris and Danny, and that's me with the doll. Behind them, beside the two boys, is my father. Mm -hmm. On the far left is my mother's brother, John. Uh, the middle person is a relative of my father's. And the next person is also, his name was Norman. The next person is another brother of my mother. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, as you mentioned, your father worked very hard in the factory. And uh, when you were growing up, uh, did that continue? Uh, like your life uh, with your parents? Were you, both of your parents working or just your no, father? My mother didn't work, but she was a good cook mm -hmm. and a very fine person. She lived to 100 years old. My father predeceased her about 25 years before. Mm -hmm. What did they do for a living, your father? My father had a butcher store. Okay. And first he had a shoe shine and a hat. Every man wore a hat. So he had a hat cleaning situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he moved into the store next door and started a business in the butcher with Mary Petrov, who's Van Petrov's wife. She had a father. His name was Dono Lukushov. He was my father's partner. They got along like brothers, and in the end they bought four stores there, eventually sold them. So this was in the area in Toronto, where? In the west end. Mm -hmm. uh, the address was 1314 Queen Street West. Mm -hmm. And uh, was there a name for the company? Yeah, Parkdale no? Meats. So they owned several. They of owned. The stores. Uh, they bought the, the four stores because it extended about four hundred mm -hmm. feet in mm -hmm. the back. So eventually they sold it. So it was in the meat business. Meat butcher. Mm -hmm. Butcher business. But they also sold potatoes and carrots and probably a few other things. Mm -hmm. So while you were growing up, did you did you? also help in the stores? No, or, no? No, mm -hmm. no, never helped in the store. Yeah, tell us about how you, your life growing up as a child. If I knew, I'd tell you, but I don't know. We were very happy. My father had a car before mm -hmm. I was born. It was a 1930 Ford and he bought it on the 20th of June and every year we had ice cream on that day, mm -hmm. especially for the car. And then I was born after that. Yes, and when you were growing up, what kind of uh, activities did you go to school, church? I went, I went to church and I went to school. And what school and was I went to Parkdale Public School and I went to the Macedonian Bulgarian School on Parliament Street with a streetcar. 
Was that in a church or in Yes, a... it was in St. Caroline Methodist First Church mm -hmm. on Parliament Street. My father bought us a house because we were living in behind the store where he worked. He bought a house at 57 West Lodge, mm -hmm. close enough so he could walk to work and go home for lunch and come back to work. Okay. And uh, as you were growing up, uh, did, did you mentioned uh, being in the um, Macedonian uh, Bulgarian school and we have a nice picture here of other activities that your family was involved in. Was it your brother? I don't know. I wasn't, but both my brothers are in that picture. The one is at the front and he doesn't have an instrument. Uh -huh. And I know my other brother played the violin. So this is a mandolin group? Orchestra? I guess so. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just found that picture in my house. I yes. don't know. So they, there was a group practicing yes, yes. Um, and they also children. had a group called the Balkansky Unak. Mm -hmm. I don't know, the, all the boys were dressed in shirts and ties and I remember seeing a picture of them. And that was a singing group or a... No, I don't know what it was. Mm -hmm. Dance group? A dance? Possibly. Probably Possibly. A dance group. <laughs> Possibly. Okay, so you continued going to Parkdale and uh, was uh, was that for your elementary school? Yes. How many years did you go there? Eight years and then I went to Parkdale Collegiate. Oh, so that was an athletic school, the UNAC, uh, the young Mladi uh, Unatsi. <laughs> then I went to Parkdale Collegiate mm -hmm. and... Uh, what did you study in Parkdale Collegiate? Everything except Latin. Okay. And then uh, there I studied typing instead of shorthand mm -hmm. and Latin. And then the teacher called me up and said, we picked you to go and work at the city hall. Do you want to go? And at that time I said yes. So I don't remember how old I was, about 17, I guess. Mm -hmm. And you started working quite young? Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, you were 17, right? 17, I guess. Yes, around. 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 Okay, yeah. estimate, yeah. Just so that. I worked in the city hall, mm -hmm. in the court office, mm -hmm. and eventually that's where I met my husband, but I knew him from before. Okay, and <coughs> um, while, you were, uh, while you were growing up, uh, in addition to going to the Macedonian school, did you go to other activities from yes. the community? What were they? I played tennis all, every night almost in the summer. Mm -hmm. I also went swimming one day a week. The Toronto Synchronized Swimming Club. Mm -hmm. And then I had my mother and my aunt come and we were doing funny things in the water and my mother had a fit. But she mm -hmm. didn't know that we were okay. Okay. And did you go to any dances or community no. events? I was too young for that group that mm -hmm. had a lot of dances at St. Cyril and Methody Hall. Yes. Before the church opened up on Dundas. And that's the story. Right. And then tell us about, you mentioned your husband, you met him, met him while you worked at the court? Yes, I met yes. him there because he was a student. So how? what was your first uh, time you saw him? Tell us about that story. I'm not sure. I think it was at a wedding. Okay. At St. George's Church in the basement. Yes. And he said, do you want to go and see where I go to school? And I said, okay. I asked my mother, she says, okay. So we left the wedding. We went to Osgoode Hall at Queen Anne University, it's the school where he went. And he took me through the school. And then we came back to the wedding and that was it. We had our first date, as you can see there, mm -hmm. on June the 9th, 1951. And I had never been to the races. He took me to the races at Woodbine. Mm -hmm. On the way home, he stopped in front of his father's store at 1160 Queen Street East. Mm -hmm. And he said, I want you to meet my parents. I said, no way, I'm not meeting your parents. Sorry. <laughs> what kind of store was that? That was uh, grocery and mm -hmm. butcher. So then we stopped at another store. And that store was Johnny Bittoff's father, whose name was Nick. And my husband called him out, I want you to meet this girl. And I had another fit. I didn't want to meet them. <laughs> so anyway, we didn't... Why was that? Well, in those days, you really didn't 
go to visit your in-laws until you decided that's it. Mm -hmm. Not on your first date. Okay. Mm -hmm. But he must have felt confident, I guess. Anyway, that was the first day. We got married. We got engaged in August. 19. And we got married the same year mm -hmm. in October. October the 21st, 1951. That's when you got married. That's the picture. Mm -hmm. And so tell us a little bit about your husband's family now. My husband's family was a large family. Mm -hmm. And who were his parents? His parents were Petra mm -hmm. and Stavro Ilaya. Mm -hmm. They had a grocery store uh, at 1160 Queen Street East, and they lived upstairs. And uh, did uh, did his parents meet here in Canada, no, or did they? No, they came. They came here. Uh, my father-in-law came first, and he brought his older son, whose name was Peter. And then, because Vasilka, who was first born, wrote and said they got no food, they got nothing to eat in, in Macedonia. Mm -hmm. You better bring us. Excuse me. You better bring us to Canada. Uh -huh. So that's how it happened. So the, his father came first and then brought everybody slowly. The father came here mm -hmm. quite a bit earlier. Mm -hmm. He had also been in Germany to work, but he didn't get very far in Germany. So he did come to Canada before and brought his older son, Pete, oldest son, mm -hmm. Peter, and then Vasilka and my husband and his wife. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Now, your husband has an interesting uh, had an interesting uh, career as a student. Tell us about his education. He went to Riverdale Collegiate, mm -hmm. and from there he went to medical school. He didn't stay in medical school. He decided he wanted to be a lawyer. This was in Toronto, in the yes. University no, of Toronto. Here. University mm -hmm. of Toronto. Mm -hmm. Both, both of those. Uh, the medical school was in Toronto University and the law school was at Osgoode Hall mm -hmm. at Queen Anne University. At Queen University. And it has a strange door at the front of the street because there were cows at one time and the cows would get into the schoolyard. Mm -hmm. So they had a door, I don't know how to describe it, you had to go in and then turn around, but the cows were too big, they couldn't get in then. Mm -hmm. That's the story. <laughs> And your husband finished law school. How yes. did his career progress? He opened a business. Mm -hmm. And what was his business called? James Elia, barrister and solicitor. Okay. Got it. And he has. We have a nice picture of him here as a young man. Tell us yes. about that picture. That picture is the service he had in the army. They were allowed to go on a last furlough, and they went to New York with a group. And I believe they, there must have been eight or ten of them. And then the war was over, so he never did go overseas. But he was conscripted? Yes. And this was uh, during law school or after law school? Uh, before. Before law yes. school he was And he went to law school. And then he went to law school. The church, yes, the first church on Parliament Street. So this is the church, St. St. Cyril and Methody. Mm -hmm. Before they moved to the new church, right, and uh, Mountain Street. So this is the church, Saint Saint Cyril and Methody. Mm -hmm. Before they moved, right, and uh, the next picture the is next picture, several young men. The only person I know there is my father, and I don't know who the other people are. Mm -hmm. They're probably friends or relatives, and it looks like it's in front of the church also. Mm -hmm. At Parliament Street. Parliament Street. Because he really supported that church. This is your father? My father, mm -hmm. yes. This was the church, St. Cyril and Methody. St. Cyril and Methody. And but then they moved. Then they built the big church with the hall. Right. And when you married your husband, tell us about uh, where we, you got married. We got married in St. George's Church because that's where my father-in-law was the first president. Mm -hmm. And there was no way we were going to get married anywhere else. So that's How it. did you, was it easy to adjust to the new church for oh, you? Very easy. And tell you us about... You have to join in. And tell us about that. You have to join the ladies' so you were welcomed? Yes. Mm 
but there were other there were all Macedonians from yes. uh, your, your different husband's village, village mostly not entirely mm -hmm. which was Gar Garbage. Garbage. Uh -huh. yes. and but you felt very welcome I had to mm -hmm. <laughs> if you don't make yourself welcome you're never welcome and so, our children mm -hmm. were all the three children were Mm -hmm. uh, that's it, they they the were part children. of the church and they were yes, in they the were, activities. They were, they were baptized there, and mm -hmm. the three of them were married there, mm -hmm. and their children were all baptized. Mm -hmm. So you had you had quite an active community church life with your yes, husband. We did. Yes, yes, tell us about yes. as the kids were growing up. They joined several groups there. Yes, they did. They went to Sunday school. They went to Bulgarian school. They didn't like that very much, but they went. Mm -hmm. And they also used to go downtown to the museum mm -hmm. every Saturday morning. My husband would drive them down, go to work for a couple of hours, and then pick them up. Yes. Tell us about your children and when they were born. My first child was born on the 28th of April, mm -hmm. 53, and 1953. And her name? Her name was Petra, which was my mother-in-law's name. But she liked the name Patricia, mm -hmm. and of course we didn't want to send her to school, I don't think, with a name like Petra. Right. And her second name was Elizabeth, because that's when the queen in, in England started to be queen, as far as I know. So she was born in? She was born in Toronto. 19? 1953. Okay. She's a teacher. And she's a really good teacher. She has two boys. Uh, sorry, you have two, two girls? No, two children? I have a boy too. Okay, tell us about him. The next one after Patricia was Andrew James. He is now a doctor. He went to school. He has four degrees and he has a... The last thing he did was graduate with a PhD in neurophysiology. He works as a cancer research fellow, I guess mm -hmm. it's called, at uh, Princess Margaret Hospital. And he also teaches. I, I he also te he did, but he doesn't teach anymore. At he also flies a plane, which I don't like. Mm -hmm. But you have to like some things, don't you? And he taught uh, part time at University of yes, Toronto. He did. In yes, the but faculty he doesn't of, anymore. Uh, medicine, yes. No, no, not the faculty of medicine. Something neurobiology, something yes. like that. Mm -hmm. I can never remember it. And then we had another girl, three kids all together: Patricia, Andrew, and Sandra. Mm -hmm. Sandra's name is Sandra Tsveta, which was my mother's name. She is also a teacher. She didn't teach very long because she has three children. Her older boy is a chemical engineer. He's and 24 years old. Mm -hmm. She has a girl named Alexa. She's 22. And the boy, your she, grandson's she, name? His name is Nicholas. Nicholas and Alexa. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they like Nicholas because their church was St. Nicholas. So they liked that, and mm -hmm. she liked it too. And this is St. Nicholas um, Church? It's a Macedonian church, mm -hmm. because they live in Tecumseh, and that, that's the suburb of Windsor. Okay. But believe me, we talk on the phone three times a day, and they come regularly, and I go there regularly. They also have a boy named Thomas, who wants to be a lawyer. He's in his third year university, and they're happy. Mm -hmm. But getting back to Patricia, Yes. She has two boys. Yes. Her older boy's name is David, and he is an engineer. The second boy, you'll see it on my list there, <laughs> is Jeffrey. Okay. Jeffrey went to school on a scholarship in North Carolina for four years. He also earned two degrees there, but his favorite sport was baseball. Mm -hmm. We all went to Saskatchewan. Regina to watch him play in the Canada Games in 2005 and they won the, the championship for Canada. Mm, so he's an accomplished player, basically. Yeah, he was, yes, but now he's a teacher. He mm -hmm. then went, went back to school to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. He was also in the Pan American Games in Mexico 
where they won the, um, I think it was a bronze medal. And this is with baseball as well? Yes, this is with baseball. So he's professionally playing baseball? No, he plays with the Barry Baycats, yes. which is just a, a really good team. And last year they won the championship for Southern Ontario, and he was happy. Yes, very, very good. And this is a picture of some of your other grandchildren? They're my, all my grandchildren are in that. Okay. There's seven of them at mm -hmm. our cottage on Georgian Bay. And you mentioned uh, your son as well? Yeah, my son's in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, he's, he's not a he's, grandson. His children, yeah. His children are there too at the far end, a girl and a boy, mm -hmm. Alexander and Andrea. And right. she has my name too. <laughs> but we didn't want a, her going to school with a name like Dana. So, okay. so we mentioned uh, your, your, your other daughter's children as well, Patricia? Yes, Patricia has two boys. We've mentioned them. One is an engineer. Mm -hmm. And his name? David. Mm -hmm. He has a house. Jeffrey is two years younger. He has a house. Nicholas belongs to my other daughter, and he has a house. I don't know where, where these guys got all the money to buy a house. <laughs> but they did, and they work hard. And they all went to university, mm -hmm. and they've got at least one or two degrees, and I guess that's why they got a job. Mm -hmm. that's, that's wonderful. And you mentioned that your, uh, your father-in-law was the very first president at uh, uh, the St. George Church. Church. Yes. yes. And uh, what, what was his full name? Stavro. Yeah, it was... Elia. Elia. E-L-I-A. He was the son, I believe, of Elo. Mm -hmm. So that was about the closest they could get. So his first name was Elias Stavro? No, no, Stavro was his first Stavro name. Stavro was his first name yeah. and of course Elias, his yes. last name. That's right. And you mentioned how did that, uh, it was interesting how you mentioned how Elias came to be. It was his father's name? I understand it was his father's or his grandfather's name who mm -hmm. was Elo, but he didn't know how to spell it, I guess, at mm -hmm. the time. But he was a smart person, not because he couldn't read and write English, because mm -hmm. I'm sure he learned that too. Right. And you mentioned that when you uh, when you joined uh, St. George's Church that you were very involved there. Yes. What kind of activities were you involved in? Well, mainly the Ladies Auxiliary and, and the Sunday School. And my husband and I arranged for a trip once, and I was worried we wouldn't get enough children. And uh, when we got there, they were all lined up waiting for the bus. So they were quite happy. We were going to Casa Loma. Mm -hmm. And this is a very long time ago. Because mm -hmm. we've been married 64 years tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine my brain is still working partly. Mm -hmm. Yes. And your husband, um, uh, in, in terms of his career, he continued to, to have his law practice? For, yes. He was also a member of the uh, Law Society of Upper Canada. Mm -hmm. He was a member of the Kiwanis Club. Mm -hmm. He had lots of cousins that they went golfing together. Mm -hmm. He liked fishing. They went fishing together. And uh, he was a very devoted father and father-in-law. So... Right. Uh, you mentioned uh, when you have husband was going to school, he was uh, also, uh, one of his teachers was a, a judge, a Macedonian judge, I understand. Yes, Can you he, tell he us wasn't about his him? teacher, he was already a lawyer. His name was John Grudev, mm -hmm. and he needed a student lawyer, so he hired my husband, and he learned a lot from him. So he articled with him? Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. he did, he articled with him. Okay, and then, then he became a judge later on? No, Judge Grudev was already a judge. Oh, he was already. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure when he became a judge, but mm -hmm. because he had language, more language than just English, and he was a very relaxed person, mm -hmm. I guess that's why he became a judge. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And um, so what, what kind of activities were, was your family involved in? Is You stayed at home and your husband continued to work? Yes. They went skating. My husband used to go and help flood the uh, skating rink. They also went, 
he took them to the museum where they went once a week on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And they did all the things that other kids do. We went on a few holidays. Yes, and your husband was also involved in the Canadian Macedonian place. Yes, he was devoted to this place. Yes, he tell us it. about his involvement. How did that come about? Well, I think everybody that found out we were going to build a place like Canadian Macedonian place was happy to see it built and was happier when it built and got full. Mm -hmm. I, he used to do the odd legal thing for the Canadian Master in place because some of the people weren't as clean as they should be. I shouldn't really say that. But, but he did the. He looked after some of the some the, of the law things. some of the uh, things. Yeah. issues that yes. needed to be taken care of in That's terms right. of the place. He did yes, and we used to have dances and things. Yes, you know? tell us about your involvement. You were in the Daughters of Macedonia. Yes, yes, and well, we used to make uh, pecan pies and cookies and all kinds of Zelensky? things. Zelensky, uh, yes. And we had one lady tell us a story that when she got married, her mother-in-law said, and it was Vasa Evans's relative, okay, now you're going to make pita. But she was so short, they had to put her on a chair mm -hmm. to make the pita. <laughs> and we all laughed at that, of course. We used to have a, a very strong ladies' auxiliary in Canadian Macedonian place, but I think the times change. So that was the Daughters of Macedonia? Yes. Yes, what kind of events w were you involved in to, uh, to mainly, help with the fundraising? I know that you had a lot of involvement with that. Not too much. Mainly the bazaars we had. And we did have a garage sale once where we brought things from home. And people came and bought all kinds of things like children's beds. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine giving away your bed, but that's what people did. Mm -hmm. What do you think motivated them to get so involved, even you and your husband, uh, in terms of uh, right from the beginning? What motivated you? Why did you think that building such a ma Macedonian place was so important for old people? I would say that, uh, first of all, our name was put on the building, Canadian Macedonian Place. And the second thing was there were some older people who had no place to go. And Vasa Evans used to tell me they went to get one lady because she didn't have a car and she had no one to bring her. And she was waiting on the veranda to come here. I don't know what her name was, but that was one story we heard from her. So you felt strongly that there was a there was finally a place where our Macedonian people, yes. old elderly people can come and have a place. I think you can be 60 years old. Mm -hmm. So I should have been here 24 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and your husband was also on the board of directors. He was for, for a Canadian, long time. For I a long know, time. I don't know how many years, but mm -hmm. he was. Right. And what do you think motivated him to give up his time and I uh, guess his energy. background. Mm -hmm. His background. Was he and, proud and, of being Macedonian? Yes. And having friends here and relatives, maybe in the same group. And... Uh, going to dances and everything else. So it was a lot of community spirit spirit and yes. involvement that he enjoyed and yes. that you as well. Yes. And here's a picture of both of you. That's us. And I don't know what when it was. It was one of the events maybe at Canadian Masonic Place? I Place? don't know that for sure. Mm -hmm. Might be read, written on the back, is it? My father mm -hmm. used to write every picture on the back and then I got this habit, but I can see I didn't do it there. And then, as as you got um, as you got older, and uh, the kids were um, uh, you, your kids were all educated, mm -hmm. and um, did you and your husband continue your involvement with the church and with other Macedonian uh, functions? Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. We did. You continue. Where did you uh, reside? At in the East End, Scarborough, mm -hmm. 55 Cliffside Drive, and it's on Scarborough Bluffs. And we also, in 1974, mm -hmm. built a cottage on Georgian Bay, which was very happy for us and our family and our parents. 
And then my father-in-law and mother-in-law had passed away, so they didn't come. But my father-in-law did see the place. Mm -hmm. Actually, it, it was a large piece of land, 25 acres. And Jim bought it with a friend of his and subdivided it into cottage lots. And that's how we got started there. And we're on the waterfront, and we love it. Mm -hmm. We see the sunset every day. The kids love the water. My grandchildren love the water. And I hope they have some children soon so I can be a great grandmother. And um, with your husband's involvement in Canadian Macedonian Place, you said he was involved right from the beginning? Yes, I think so. And he was yes. on the board of directors yes. for, for quite a long time? Yes. Now, uh, he did important work for, for Canadian Macedonian Place in terms of uh, some of the, the legal um, laws yes. and, and revisions. Can you tell us about... I don't what? know about the revisions. Yeah, but I understand I it was in 1996? Possibly. Yes. So, Be yeah. Because he was still involved with Canadian Mastery in Place at the time. Mm -hmm. So a lot, a lot of his work was voluntary? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Had to be a volunteer to get going. <laughs> Your husband was the legal advisor I guess for you Canadian Mastery yes, in Place? Yes, I guess you could call it that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a lot of support uh, in terms of giving to the home that your husband, uh, you know, volunteered because legal issues are always very important and it's important to have a good uh, legal advisor. I hope so. Yeah, that's why he was involved all along. He was, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, can you tell us a, a little bit uh, more about uh, your your years with your husband as, as you got older? Did you, you, you said you went to the cottage? Yes, we had a cottage and we went there regularly mm -hmm. because uh, he liked the fresh air mm -hmm. and we liked having our children around. And right. then they, two of my children built a cottage there mm -hmm. also. And did you travel uh, yes, and we had an opportunity to visit Macedonia? Yes, we, met, we visited Macedonia, I believe, in 1965. Tell us about the trip. Where did you go and what, uh, what well, impressions well, we did you have? we went right to the villages because he had to see Gabrish again, I guess, mm -hmm. and I wanted to see a cousin of mine who was still living in Chernobyshya. But we were disappointed because, not really disappointed, happy to see it, but there wasn't too much progress in the old country. Because I remember my father and mother went in 1965, I believe, and my dad said that they were a hundred years behind Canada, mm -hmm. and he never wanted to knock his nationality or his religion, but he really felt that there wasn't enough progress. Mm -hmm. And I guess you could blame the government. Mm -hmm. And when you went, what year was that? 1965, I believe. Uh -huh. And and with your, you went with your uh, husband? Just, just with mm -hmm. my husband. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was it like meeting some of your relatives? Well, they were happy to see us. Mm -hmm. Because, we, yeah, and we were happy to see them. Were you able to speak uh, Macedonian oh, with them? Yes, I speak fluently. I used to be able to read and write a little, but I can't do it now. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us, uh, when you saw them, uh, you spoke in Macedonian? Yes. Yes. Did they tell you anything about the fact that uh, many of them, I, I, they, they spoke Greek and that... They no, they never mentioned anything about the Greeks. No? No. So you just talked about... And they about had a house with a refrigerator, and uh, that was the one house we went to. And in order to find that house, we had to stop at another place first. And as it was, we knew those people, relatives in Canada, so they were happy to see us too. Mm -hmm. And then we got a driver, and he took us to Oak Creek. Ohrit in the Republic of Macedonia at that time, which was... I don't know, but I hope so. Yes. And uh, his name was Boris. His wife was a dentist, and they both made the same amount of money. Because she was a dentist didn't mean that she was more wealthy than him being a taxi driver. Mm -hmm. And we stopped in a restaurant and had supper with him. Then he took us to his house to see where he lived, and we had to climb in an elevator, 
which wasn't too great. Mm -hmm. And he had two children, mm -hmm. two girls, I believe. Right. And, and then we came back here. And he also arranged for us to go out for dinner one night. They had an orchestra. And it was quite interesting. A lot of music, Macedonian music. Macedonian music. We even got him up in an auto. Mm -hmm. And if I don't, if I know correctly, the song they played was Makedonsko Devoite. Yes. You know that one? Of course, yeah. <laughs> That's a nice one. And when you were in Chernovishta, um, uh, whereabouts is the location of Chernovishta? That's a good question. I'm not sure, it but it's not too far from Gavrish because mm -hmm. my grandmother mm -hmm. on so my mother on my father's side was from Gavrish. So she also came to Chernovishta to be married. Would that be near Kostur or Lerin? Yeah, we, we went through Kostur uh, on the way down, but I can't I can't say exactly how far it was mm -hmm. from Gavrish to Chernovishta. I guess they walked everywhere anyway. Right. They didn't have any cars. It was walking distance in any case. I don't know. Mm -hmm. My grandfather, my mother's father, he had a little store. And we expected to see a store like here. So they opened the door, but it wasn't quite like here. And he used to walk up between the va in the valleys, between the hills, and I suppose you could call it mountains, and trade with another place and bring other things to his store to sell. Mm -hmm. But it was very small. What kind of things did he sell in the store? I don't know, mainly candy, I think. So it was like a little variety store? I don't know. Mm -hmm. There was nothing there when we went. Right. He had already left. He had left already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They brought him to Canada when he was about 92 or 3 years old. And they just looked after him here. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that your daughter also visited Macedonia? My Tell daughter us about just, that she story. just came back. Yes. She took her mother-in-law and her husband and two of her children. And they had already been there a couple of times. And uh, the mother-in-law has three brothers there. And where is that? Where is your uh, daughter's uh, husband's uh, family from? They're from uh, Bitola. Obitula, uh -huh. So they really enjoyed visiting them. Two of them were judges originally. They don't work now. And they had nice houses. I saw a picture of them. And I have met them. They came to Canada when my daughter met, married her husband. Mm -hmm. This is your daughter? Sandra. Sandra. The younger girl. Mm -hmm. Anyway. You, you mentioned something about uh, the, um, the Prime Minister. Glad's. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, tell us about that. My daughter Patricia and her husband took their two boys to England. Just recently? No, when they were about 10 and 12, I believe. And they were in a church and they saw a picture that said Macedonia for the Macedonians. And that was the Prime Minister before. His name was Gladstone, I believe. Yes, I think that's I wrote right. it down there. Yes, it was. William yeah. Gladstone, was mm -hmm. it? And she took a picture of that and has it at home. And I've mm -hmm. seen it many times. And that became a motto, Macedonian for the Macedonians. Yes, it did. For, it did. for uh, all Macedonians. Сега може нешто да ни кажеш за за децата да слушнат како од од ваше име. Што што мислиш е добро за младите деца кога растат тука во Канада? Како да се тука? Аха. Ти е се късметли. You know what that means? Yes, they're very lucky. That's right. Kaži mi zašto? Zašto se kasmetli? Kaži mu na deca ta. Ne možete se razbera? Why are they lucky to be here? Da mu kažiš. Što kaže mu kaže? Ime da jade. Možda ode na skolje. Možda ode na crkva te kasake. They want to borrow the car sometimes. They get it. Or they... But tia se govore po nekaj po makedonski. Da. But ne govore kaj jaz še govorim. But znaje da govore. 
That that's something, isn't it? Your grandchildren can speak Macedonian. No, not my grandchildren. But oh, tears na loshi to do me na. Ne loshi, no, no, ne teko loshi. Uh huh. Anyway, glass of mioida. Should should koko kenko bori me poike. You you can yes, you can. We can uh, we can uh, say you can say it in English. What kind of message would you like to share with the young people? What would you like them to know as being important? First of all, they should remember where their parents came from and where their grandparents came from. And they still call me Baba. Mm -hmm. I'm Baba D. Okay. And they still respect me. They come to visit. They're very kind. Mm -hmm. And two are married. They, they really, really treat me wonderfully. Mm -hmm. That's great. And uh, uh, why do you think? Why why would you like uh, our our young generation? Why do you think it's important for them to to know that they're Macedonian and proud of where their parents came from and their grandparents? Why is that important? It's important to me, even though I was born here, because we spoke Macedonian at home, even though my mother, my mother and father spoke English, but not as good as they could have. But I don't know how to answer the question, except that it's our heritage, and Canadian Macedonian Place is part of our heritage, and this historical society is also part of our heritage. And on behalf of the Macedonian, uh, of the Canadian Macedonian Place and Canadian Macedonian Historical Society. Uh, Ms. Donna Elia, we want to thank you so much for taking the time and uh, sharing with us your story. We really appreciate you being here and the messages that you shared thank with you. us. Thank you. And I thank you also and the gentleman that has beautiful hair. 